I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today if you want to learn how to get the best looking FPV footage out of your GoPro Session 5 or any GoPro or, in some sense, any action camera. Stay tuned. Just to bring you up to speed, in previous videos in this series, I've determined that it's best to record in 2.7K resolution and upload to YouTube in 2.7K resolution at a, about a 16 to 24 megabit per second bit rate. I've also discussed when you might want to and when you might not want to use Protune Flat. You can check out the other videos in the playlist in the video description if you want more details about that. What we're going to be looking at today is shutter speed and ISO limit. So what are shutter speed and ISO limit and how do they affect your image in total? Uh, for those of you with a photography background, this is gonna be real familiar territory, but many people who get into this hobby don't have a photography or filmmaking background. So let's just do a little bit of generic basic talk about camera exposure. Fundamentally, what a camera does is it exposes a sensing element to light. Uh, that, that sensing element used to be film, but today it's pretty much always a digital image sensor. And that sensor is going to be able to record light of a certain intensity. So if too much light is hitting the sensor, then the image will be overexposed. Parts of the image will be basically blown out, it's called. They'll be white and you won't get any detail in the image. Uh, if the Im if the not enough light is hitting the sensor, then parts of the image will be dark, they'll be lost in shadow. And if you're a filmmaker or a photographer, sometimes you use that to artistic effect to intentionally cause parts of the image to be darker or brighter. But in general, when we're, when we're flying FPV, we're not so much going for artistic effect, we just wanna get the maximum amount of detail in the, the frame as possible. And maybe we'll do stuff in post-production to, to tweak the exposure there. So the goal of the camera is to make the right amount of light hit the image sensor to get the maximum amount of detail in the frame. The camera has several different tools to adjust the amount of light that's hitting the image sensor. One of those tools in a traditional camera is the aperture of the lens. The aperture of the lens is those little petals, the leaves that stop down and open up that you can see, you can actually see them working if you on some cameras. Uh, and, and of course, the smaller the aperture, the less light hits the lens. And in fact, for an action camera, this is not in play. Action cameras typically do not have an adjustable aperture. They'll have a fixed aperture. It's often maybe 2.8, f2.8 if you're into cameras. Uh, and so that is not a tool that an action camera will use to adjust the amount of light hitting the lens. The reasons for that are a topic for another discussion. The other tool that the camera has for adjusting the amount of light that hits the lens is the shutter speed. And what that means is how fast the shutter opens and closes. Now on a DSLR or a film camera, there is actually a physical shutter element that closes like a barn door. It comes down, it opens up or vice versa. And it stays open for a certain amount of time. On a, on a still camera, it goes tick, tick. And that's the thing that makes the sound that you associate with a DSLR. You know, the camera, that's the shutter going up and down. We're going to lose that someday when cameras aren't ha don't have shutters anymore. Digital cameras don't have physical shutters. What they do is, and I'm on the edge of my knowledge here, though, so you guys who are experts on digital cameras, please forgive me if I get something wrong. But basically, the image sensor is sensing light, and it's accumulating information, and that information is read off of the image sensor uh, after so every, every so many seconds or fractions of a second, and that's the shutter speed of the digital image sensor. Of course, the slower the shutter speed, the more light is accumulated by the sensor. The longer you wait, the more light is accumulated, and so the brighter the image is going to be. And of course, the faster the shutter speed, the less light is accumulated, and the dimmer the image is going to be. There's a final tool for adjusting the exposure of the image. It doesn't really pertain to how much light hits the sensor, like the aperture and the shutter speed physically affect the amount of photons hitting the sensor. The other tool is the ISO. Now ISO goes back to film. Uh, when we had physical you know, film, chemical film, the film could be designed with different sensitivity. Uh, it was a chemical reaction occurring when the light hit the film and the, the film could be designed so it was more or less sensitive to light and that was described by the ISO. Uh, a higher ISO film was more sensitive to light, a lower ISO film was less sensitive to light. Well, we've approximated that idea with digital image sensors. The digital image sensor, what happens is it outputs 
the pixel information from the sensing element, and then that is amplified. It's run through an amplifier. And by, amp by applying more gain to the amplifier, you can make the sensor essentially be more sensitive to light. You get more, again, DSLR guys, I'm, I know I'm screwing it up. I'm, I'm going for broad strokes here, okay? So correct me in the comments, okay? But I, I understand. So the, what we can do is we can turn the gain up on the amplifier of the digital sensor and essentially make it more sensitive to light. And that's referred to as the ISO. It's similar to what we were doing with the chemical process, but not obviously identical. It's an electronic, not a chemical thing. By, by setting the image sensor to a higher ISO setting, we get more sensitivity to light. But the flip side is we also get more digital noise. Anytime you amplify a signal, you also amplify the noise uh, amplification can't change the signal to noise ratio. It can make the signal louder, but it also makes the noise louder. And the effect of that is that you get a grainier image uh, is one way to put it. You can also see in some extreme cases more basically bad pixels. You'll see like magenta where there shouldn't be any magenta pixels if you zoom in. Essentially, it's a not as clean looking an image when you have a higher ISO. But the flip side is that with a higher ISO, you can, whereas you might just get a dark shadowy image with no details, you do get the details. It's just a grainy and, and not as high quality image. So to sum up, the camera has three tools that it can use to adjust the exposure, one of them being the shutter speed, one of them being the aperture, and one of them being the ISO. And our digital, uh, our, our action cameras only have two of those tools because they have a fixed aperture. So they have shutter speed and ISO. And that's where we get in the GoPro to the ProTune settings for shutter speed and ISO. Now the digital camera is gonna to attempt to balance the shutter speed and the ISO together. You can see that if we had more sensitivity because of higher ISO, we would then balance that out with a lower shutter or faster shutter speed and we'd have the same amount of exposure if we had less sensitivity due to a lower iso we could open the shutter up more and have a slower shutter speed and you see there's there's a balanced relationship between them any any combination of which would produce the correct exposure so the camera is going to attempt to balance them and produce uh, a good looking picture one of the things that it tries to do is it tries to manage the shutter speed because as the shutter speed gets slower the image gets more blurry. We get more motion blur. Now, there's different targets for different algorithms. Uh, an action camera is often not going to try to create an ultra sharp picture because we know that action cameras are often capturing a lot of motion and a little bit of motion blur can actually look good. Uh, an ultra sharp high frame rate picture can actually not look the best to many people's eyes. So for example, the action camera will try to target a shutter speed that is not so fast as to create an ultra sharp image, but not so slow as to create a really blurry smeary image, right? Once it's determined the shutter speed that it's going to try to hit, then it'll pick the correct ISO setting to produce the correct exposure. But what if it's not enough light to achieve the optimal settings? Then the camera has to make some compromises. Maybe it will use a higher ISO, therefore producing a grainier image, but still getting the exposure right. Or maybe it will keep a low ISO, keeping a clean image, but it will open up the shutter, thereby creating a blurrier image, but with less image noise. Now the GoPro does all this automatically, but you can also tweak it. And that's the settings we're gonna look at today, the ISO limit, and the shutter speed. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the ISO limit in the GoPro ProTune settings. And I do wanna point out to you that this is the ISO limit. What that means is you're not setting a fixed ISO. If you set the ISO limit to 400, it doesn't mean that the camera is gonna use 400 ISO. What if there's too much light and a 400 ISO would result in an overexposed image. The camera can use a lower OSO to result in higher image quality and less light sensitivity. So if you set the ISO limit to 400, the GoPro may use a 100 ISO, no problem. The default setting, if you're using ProTune, is an ISO limit of 1600, and that's what we're looking at now. Now, 1600 is very sensitive and will produce some image noise. But again, remember that it doesn't mean that you're using an ISO of 1600. If it's a bright, sunny day, like we're looking at here, you will probably be using an ISO around 100 to maybe 400 at most, depending on if you're in the clouds or, or shadow or not. 
Uh, and this is a common misconception that I see people have. People think that you're setting the ISO to 1600 and you're not. It is an ISO limit. It is the highest ISO that the camera will be allowed to use. When the camera uses a higher ISO, it, it, it compromises image quality and that's why they, they allow you to limit the highest ISO. But when a camera uses a lower Ooh. ISO, you just get more image quality, so they don't they don't give you the option to set a fixed ISO like you would with a, like a high end DSLR where you might want full image control. So we're going to look here at a, at a, a some video shot with ISO limit of sixteen hundred, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the exact same image settings the exact same day uh, and with an ISO limit of four hundred. And I haven't compared this footage together, but here's what I think you're going to see. We'll see if I turn out to be right. I don't think you're going to see any difference. And that's the point I'm trying to make here. On a bright, sunny day, you will not see any difference between ISO limit 1600 and ISO limit 1400 or 400 because the camera is using an ISO of, let's say, 200 or 100. And so changing the limit doesn't matter if we're not hitting the limit to begin with. I had people in my initial GoPro comparison, GoPro versus uh, uh, Runcam 3, tell me, oh, the problem is you're using an ISO of 1600 and that's why the GoPro looks worse. That might be true if I were manually setting the ISO to 1600, but I'm not. It's an ISO limit. Have I made that point enough? I think I'm, so many people have a misconception about this. I feel very strongly that this point needs to be reiterated again and again and again. One more time. It's an ISO limit. It's not a fixed ISO. On a bright sunny day, you're not going to see any difference because you're not hitting the limit to begin with. Now here we are again back at ISO limit 1600 and it's a darker day right? It's towards the end of the day. Uh, there's much less light and we're starting to get into a scenario where an ISO of 400 might not be fast enough. And so we might need to use higher ISO. And under these conditions, I think we're going to see a difference between ISO limit 1600 and ISO limit 400. What difference are we going to see? Well, the camera is going to use its only other tool at its, ex at its disposal to adjust the exposure, and that is the shutter speed. When we limit the ISO to 400, the camera will have to open up the shutter more, and therefore we will get more motion blur. We'll get more motion blur by forcing the camera to use a higher shutter, a lower shutter speed and a higher ISO. And that, I think, is the point of this setting. It allows you to force a trade-off between motion blur and image quality. We can get a higher quality image with more motion blur by setting ISO limit 400, or we can get a lower quality image with less motion blur and more sharpness by setting ISO limit 1600. Let's compare. So here's a still frame I've grabbed, and this is a ISO limit of 1600. And look at the amount of motion blur that's on the grass there. And here's a still frame I grabbed uh, from a ISO limit 400. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't see much difference between them. So what's the conclusion there? Well, the conclusion I, I have to take from this, well, number one, the copter speed is not being controlled for. In order to get this, in order to really compare motion blur, we would have to have the copter moving at the exact same speed. And that's not really possible unless I put two GoPros on the same copter, which I only have one GoPro. Oh, well, bummer. I guess I have to buy a second one. Uh, but number two, uh, what I would take from this is maybe that the, the camera is using an ISO of 400. There's enough light in this scene that the camera can expose adequately with an ISO 400. So changing the ISO limit from 1600 to 400 didn't make a difference. I don't know, uh, but I, and I'm not going to go out and shoot any more footage in an even darker scene to try and make this point, especially because there's other components of the test I can't control for. But I stand by the conclusion, if you have enough light then there won't be any difference between ISO limit 1600 and ISO 400, limit 400. If you don't have enough light, then ISO limit 400 will have more motion blur, but a, a cleaner image. ISO limit 1600 will have less motion blur, but a little bit noisier image. Another thing that GoPro lets you do is adjust the shutter speed manually. So that's what we've done here. We've got a fixed shutter speed of 1 1 20th of a second. And what this is going to do is it's going to limit the GoPro's ability to adjust the exposure in flight. The exposure is going to be much more consistent. Now this could be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're flying in consistent lighting conditions, then it could be a good thing. But if you're flying into dark shadows under trees and then over the trees into the bright sunshine, you're going to find that the image is going to go from being underexposed to overexposed. 
overexposed. For example, at the very beginning, we can see that we can s the image is actually overexposed in this shot that you see of me planted on the driveway ready to start flying. Uh, the sky is overexposed, but you can see details in the trees. Normally what the GoPro does here is it exposes for the sky and the trees are dark shadows. So we've got consistent, but maybe not always correct lighting. I picked 1 1 20th of a second because I thought that it produced approximately correct exposure for this lighting condition. But take a look what happens now if I go to 1 30th of a second. The first thing you should notice is that, is that this image is really overexposed. It's too bright. With a, with a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second, too much light is getting in. The GoPro has probably uh, changed the ISO of the sensor to ISO, whatever its lowest ISO is, probably maybe ISO 100, uh, and it just can't go any further in that direction. We need to have a faster shutter speed to less, let less light hit the sensor, and we, we're not allowing the GoPro to do that. So we have an overexposed image. But the other thing I want you to see is, look how blurry the image is. There's so much motion blur. Especially look at the ground when I'm flying low, or if I do a, a quick move, the trees get kind of blurry. Uh, that's what I've been talking about when I say that going to an ISO limit of 400 in dark conditions will give you a cleaner image with less noise, but more motion blur. This is the motion blur I'm talking about. I think most people would agree that this is more motion blur than we would really like to see. It looks, it doesn't look great. Uh, there's a there's a sweet spot between enough motion blur that the image looks nice and and fast without looking ultra sharp and ultra crisp, but uh, but this is too much. Okay, so this is a demonstration of, of excess motion blur because we've got a fixed shutter speed that is too slow for the lighting conditions. So what's the takeaway here? What are the settings that you should use? And the answer depends a little bit on the lighting conditions, but not as much as I originally thought. I was surprised that when I went to the darker lighting conditions that I expected to show a difference between ISO limit 400 and ISO limit 1600, there really didn't seem to be much of a difference. And that told me that that amount of light was still okay for an ISO of 400. I expected the image sensor to need a higher ISO for the amount of light. It means that the image sensor is more sensitive to light than I was giving it credit for. And it means, uh, I think, we'll do some more data to, to test this, but I think that unless you're flying under really much darker conditions than most of us are gonna fly under, the ISO limit isn't gonna make a big difference in the shutter speed. Maybe it'll make a small difference, uh, I wish there was a way to see retroactively, like if, if do, do video files have EXIF data with, photo with photographs, digital photographs, you can look at the EXIF data in the photograph. The camera stores what shutter speed it was using. I wish that there was a way to see in the GoPro uh, video files what shutter speed it was using. I don't, maybe there is, but I don't know what it is. But I think that there wasn't much difference under those lighting conditions, sort of dusky lighting conditions between ISO limit 400 and ISO limit 1600. So I would say, uh, I'd say it probably doesn't matter unless you're flying under very dark lighting conditions. If you are flying under very dark lighting conditions, an ISO limit of 1600 will result in noisier footage. I wish I'd have showed you an example of noisier footage, but I'd have to go to like a really dark room and I just didn't do that for this roundup. So uh, an ISO limit of 400 will give you cleaner footage uh, with a little bit more motion blur. Uh, as for the fixed shutter speed, frankly, I don't ever intend to mess with that. Uh, I, I think that's a really, I can't think of any scenarios where as an FPV flyer, I would want to mess with a fixed shutter speed. If I did with a mess with a fixed shutter speed, I would want to leave the ISO limit at 1600 to give the camera as much latitude as possible to adjust the exposure of the image to keep it correct. But it feels to me like when you're flying FPV, there's so many scenarios where the lighting is going to change dramatically. You fly into the building, you fly out of the building, whatever it is you're doing, and it just feels like a fix, the camera, you really want to give the camera the tool of adjusting the shutter speed in order to allow it to uh, get the exposure correctly correct uh, if you're if you're shooting if you're using your GoPro for something other than FPV maybe there's a scenario where a fixed shutter speed would be correct but that's not really the focus of this channel so that is going to bring us to the end of this video and the conclusion unfortunately uh, is that just leave these settings on auto is probably the right thing for most setups ISO limit 1600 uh, you can set it to 400, but it's not going to make much difference under most conditions and auto shutter. But I hope you've learned something about what these things do. And if there's anything you've learned here, I hope it's that ISO limit. It's the ISO limit, not the fixed ISO. And under relatively 
bright lighting conditions or even somewhat dim lighting conditions, it's just not going to make a difference because the camera isn't hitting the limit in the first place. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying.